Hey friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, cookies and sessions uh, with the JWT tokens, that's another uh, topic which I wanted to touch base. A uh, lot many requests I have received uh, to kind of explain uh, the difference between cookie sessions and JWT tokens. And I think so it is a must know for every web developer, whether you are a front end or you are a back end developer. So you should know the basic differences and how they actually work. So let's dive more uh, into the details of uh, each one of this and how they exactly work uh, with the different frameworks. Uh, <clears throat> cookie sessions and Jot, uh, they are primarily used for the web development and it's a way to manage users and identify who's accessing website. So let's say you want to create a website where you want to manage who is logged in, who is not logged out, uh, let's say a user is logged in, you want to maintain the cart or shopping cart or whether the user wants to place an order, who's the user who's placing the order and whatnot. Uh, definitely we could do it with the help of cookie sessions and JWT tokens. And uh, it is primarily required for uh, whether you are using front end frameworks like React, Angular, Vue or whatnot. And also, uh, if you have worked with the server-side scripting like ASP.NET, PHP, Node.js, plus Express kind of a, uh, formats. <clears throat> so let's talk firstly about uh, what are cookie sessions. Now, normally they have been used in the server-side scripting. So for example, if you have worked with ASP.NET, PHP, uh, we have used cookie sessions and it's still being used. Uh, cookie sessions are normally in the form of uh, writing a very small cookie on the client side and uh, we technically create a small cookie on the client machine with a session stored on the server uh, it's it's more likely a session id that's being attached to that cookie and it's stored on the server side and uh, then once it is done every request from the client is sent with the cookie and then it is verified on the server side with the session store. So it means the server is maintaining some kind of a session store out there to maintain that. And then when you receive a request from the client, you are receiving it with the cookie. So that's how uh, details are being sent out and you can identify who's the user and how it's working. Okay, so if you want to understand like a typically flow, uh, let's understand, let's say there is a user uh, who is actually tries to logs in the website. And uh, if the user wants to authenticate, he needs to submit a username and a password uh, to the backend server or whatnot. And then uh, once the user is authenticated, means you have supplied a genuine username and a password. So a cookie with a session ID is sent back to the user, which is written on their machine. So that's why you might have seen when you visit a lot of websites where they kind of uh, ask you whether uh, we are gonna store some cookies and something on your machines, whether you accept it or not. This is more likely uh, as per the latest standards of the data privacy and uh, other uh, norms, which uh, multiple uh, countries uh, and regulatory bodies follow. And that's why those uh, things, they are changing with the way time is changing around. And then once the cookie is stored out, then every request which the user is again gonna send back to the server. So let's say the user is asking for another resource or let's say another web, web page or whatnot. That could be done with the help of a request and every request is gonna be sent with the cookie. So it means you are gonna send a cookie with every request to the server. Now server has a kind of a session store out there. There is a session ID and other details which are stored and that could be verified on the server side. And if it all looks good, uh, then that particular response for the request which user has asked for is gonna be sent back to the user. So that's how typically a flow of the uh, cookie sessions would be working. There's a very uh, popular workflow. Uh, this is uh, still used out in different um, kind of, uh, even if you're using Node.js with Express, you would be typically using a cookie session ID to maintain this. And uh, the next one, so if we understand how the cookie works, uh, the second one, which is more popular and it is more likely, I would say more aligned towards the OAuth or other uh, frameworks which have evolved over a period of time. So these are normally called as JWT tokens or they are very popularly known as JSON web tokens. Now, 
uh, they are normally used in the front end frameworks development. So if you are using React, Vue, Angular, or other frameworks, uh, you would be using uh, JSON Web Tokens. Um, a token is normally generated by the server and signed with a private key. So it means there is a server from where you are actually getting a token. So the, the token, when you get it, so it means you need to kind of verify your identity. You supply your credentials, you make sure you are the right person, and then a server assigns you a token, gives back you a token. It is just like, so let's say we go on to a hotel and then we supply our, uh, let's say, license or other information, which is an our identity verification. And then the hotel uh, uh, guys, they give us some kind of a card by which we can access certain things. One is we can access our room, which is definitely there. And then the card also identifies which particular the resources we could be uh, accessing. Like there, there might be certain other things which might not be included in our card because we are not authorized to do so. So it is more likely, I would say, a JSON web token is an authorization where, okay, I can access this thing or not. And uh, once you get the token back, then every request is sent with the token to access the resource. So whatever the resource you want to access, so you are going to send that token, so which is just like a kind of an authorization to you. Hey, you can access this or not. And server validates it before you, before it sends the response back to you. Now, if you want to kind of uh, um, see this again in a visual format, a user is there, logs in the website, uh, user sends the authentication credentials to the backend server. Now, this is where something is being changed out. The backend server or the, or the let's say, the identity access management server, it is going to use some kind of a private key to use to sign the JWT token. So it means you sign up the JWT token, it is created, and then finally, that JWT token is sent back to the user. So it means I verified my credentials and a JWT token is now available to me. Typically, a JWT token has, um, um, let's say, uh, uh, could, could be used for um, 10 minutes or 5 minutes, depending upon the, I would say, the expiry time that's being set out. And that's another, uh, I would say, another topic to be discussed, how much a JWT token validity should be set around. But that's how uh, a JWT token is sent back to the user. Now, user, uh, because the client application which is using, let's say, React, that could typically store this JWT token in a local storage, might be in the form of a cookie or might be stored in the form of, a, let's say, a local storage. So that's where it is used. And then if the user wants to access any another resource, so then every request which the user is going to send, that is going to send with the help of a JWT token. Now, this JWT token is sent back to the server with every request. So it means I want to access a specific page or a resource. So I'll send that token with that. The server again receives that token and then the token is verified whether you are the uh, right user and you have the right authorization to access the resource or not. And in case everything looks fine, uh, I would definitely get the response data back, which I can then have the resource. I could modify the way I want to do it or I want to do some reporting or whatnot. So that's the typically flow a JSON web token would follow. So I hope guys, uh, these are the very two basic methods of um, uh, maintaining user sessions or identifying users on the uh, web frameworks, uh, whether we use the cookie based sessions or whether we use JSON web tokens. JSON web tokens recently have been, I would say, more popular because they are very much aligned towards OR2 and uh, other standard frameworks uh, where we could uh, even the Azure Active Directory or Google uh, Cloud or AWS Cloud, they also use some kind of a token mechanism to identify the users and then allow the access for a specific amount of time. So I'll be uh, back with some more videos, guys. Uh, please stay tuned and have a good one. And please do subscribe to my channel. Thank you.